Have you got your green outfit ready, or are you up for getting pinched? Because St. Patrick's Day will be here before you know it. Modern St. Patrick's Day is all about donning something green, drinking plenty of green cocktails, and checking out the year's most uproarious parades. But as it turns out, the history of St. Patrick's Day isn't rooted in the 24 hours of green-tinged shamrock-waving revelry we know it for today. Of course, now you might guess it's in honor of St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland. But did you know he wasn't actually Irish? <gasps> There's a whole lot more to St. Patrick's Day than meets the eye, so stick around, like, subscribe, and enjoy this video. St. Patrick was a 5th century Romano British Christian missionary and bishop in Ireland. Much of what is known about St. Patrick comes from the Declaration, which was allegedly written by Patrick himself. It is believed he was born in Roman Britain in the 4th century into a wealthy Romano British family. His father was a deacon and his grandfather was a priest in the Christian church. According to the Declaration, at the age of 16, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and taken as a slave to Gaelic Ireland. During the six years working in Ireland as a shepherd, he somehow found his way to God. The declaration says that God told Patrick to flee to the coast, where a ship would be waiting to take him home. After making his way home, Patrick went on to become a priest. According to tradition, Patrick returned to Ireland to convert the pagan Irish to Christianity. He spent many years evangelizing in the north half of Ireland and converted thousands of the Celtic Irish folk. Patrick's efforts were eventually turned into an allegory in which he drove snakes out of Ireland. But the island nation was actually never home to any snakes. The banishing of the snakes was really a metaphor for the eradication of pagan ideology from Ireland and the triumph of Christianity. Within 200 years of Patrick's arrival, Ireland was completely Christianized. And in the centuries following Patrick's death, the myths and folktales surrounding his life became ever more ingrained in the Irish culture. Perhaps the most well-known legend of St. Patrick is that he explained the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the three leaves of a native Irish clover, the shamrock. Which actually brings us to why we wear green on St. Patrick's Day. On St. Patrick's Day, it's customary to wear shamrocks, green clothing, or green accessories. The story of St. Patrick using the shamrock to explain the Holy Trinity first appeared in writing in 1726, though it may be older. In pagan Ireland, three was a significant number, and the pagan Irish already had many triple deities, which may have aided St. Patrick in his evangelization efforts. Additionally, in efforts to convert more pagans in various lands, the church adopted pagan customs and traditions into Christianity. An Irish tradition that might have existed among the Celtic people was the belief that the four-leaf clovers were destined for good luck, as each leaf in the clover symbolized good omens. Like the shamrock or clover, many Celtic traditions were adopted into Christianity over the years. The four-leaf clover meaning became intertwined so that the first three leaves came to represent faith, hope, and love, and the fourth leaf, God's grace or luck. However, wearing green clothes in the US on St. Patrick's Day parades and celebrations only became common in the 1800s. It was a symbol that Irish Americans used to honor their heritage, and it seemed to have stuck all these years later. Initially, Ireland wasn't always associated with the color green, even though its lush hills would suggest otherwise. The Emerald Isles was actually once aligned with the color blue instead. When Henry VIII claimed himself to be King of Ireland in the 1500s, his flag was blue, meaning that Ireland was associated with the color. However, green was later used as the color of the flag in the Great Irish Rebellion in 1641, when the Irish fought against the English, and over the years, green became a national symbol of pride for Ireland. Now, what about leprechauns? We've all heard about them, and seen a couple walking the streets on St. Patrick's Day. But what do they really have to do with St. Patrick's Day? The original Irish name for these figures of folklore is Lobersen, meaning small-bodied fellow. Belief in leprechauns probably stem from Celtic beliefs in fairies, tiny men and women who could use their magical powers to serve good or evil. In Celtic folk tales, leprechauns were cranky souls responsible for mending the shoes of other fairies. Though only minor figures in Celtic folklore, leprechauns were known for their trickery 
which they often use to protect their much-fabled treasure, their pot of gold. Leprechauns have their own holiday on May 13th, but were adopted into St. Patrick's Day with many dressing up as the woolly fairies. According to Irish folklore, leprechauns wore green, and if anyone else wore the color, that individual would be invisible to leprechauns. Leprechauns are ornery sorts who like to pinch anyone they can see. Therefore, by wearing green clothing, a person is sure to avoid a painful tweet. It's not only the leprechauns who might do the pinching. Celebrants are inclined to pinch people who don't wear green as a reminder that leprechauns might sneak up on them at any time. So when was the first St. Patrick's Day celebrated? Since around the 9th or 10th century, people in Ireland have been observing the Roman Catholic feast of St. Patrick on March 17th. The first St. Patrick's Day parade took place not in Ireland, but in America. Records show that a St. Patrick's Day parade was held on March 17, 1601, in a Spanish colony in what is now St. Augustine, Florida. The parade and a St. Patrick's Day celebration a year earlier were organized by the Spanish colony's Irish vicar, Ricardo Arthur. More than a century later, homesick Irish soldiers serving the English military marched in New York City on March 17, 1772 to honor the Irish patron saint. The feast day of St. Patrick was first established as a modest religious holiday, as it fell right in the middle of the Christian season of Lent, and people began using it as a reason or <coughs> excuse to celebrate, dance, drink, and feast on the traditional meal of Irish bacon and cabbage and take a break from the restraints and abstinence of eating meat in the period leading to Easter. However, it didn't actually become a public holiday in Ireland until 1904. Over the next 35 years, Irish patronism among American immigrants flourished. Up until the mid-19th century, most Irish immigrants in America were members of the protestant middle class. When the Great Potato Famine hit Ireland in 1945, Close to one million poor and uneducated Irish Catholics began pouring into America to escape starvation. Despised for their alien religious beliefs and unfamiliar accents by the American Protestant majority, the immigrants had trouble finding even menial jobs. When Irish Americans in the country's city took to the streets on St. Patrick's Day to celebrate their heritage, newspapers portrayed them in cartoons as drunk, violent monkeys. The American Irish soon began to realize, however, that their large and growing numbers endowed them with a political power that had yet to be exploited. They started to organize their own voting bloc, known as the Green Machine, and this became an important swing vote for political hopefuls. Suddenly, annual St. Patrick's Day parades became a show of strength for Irish Americans, as well as a must-attend event for a slew of political candidates. In 1948, President Harry S. Truman attended New York City's St. Patrick's Day Parade, a proud moment for many Irish Americans whose ancestors had to fight stereotypes and racial prejudice to find acceptance in the new world. But is St. Patrick's Day celebrated the same way all around the world? Today, people of all backgrounds celebrate St. Patrick's Day, especially throughout the United States, Canada, and Australia. Although North America is home to the largest production, St. Patrick's Day is celebrated around the world in locations far from Ireland, including Japan, Singapore, and Russia. Popular St. Patrick's Day recipes include Irish soda bread, corned beef, and cabbage and champ. In Ireland, St. Patrick's Day has traditionally been a spiritual and religious occasion. In fact, up to the 1970s, Irish law mandated that pubs be closed on March 17. Beginning in 1995, however, the Irish government gave a national campaign to use interest in St. Patrick's Day to drive tourism and showcase Ireland and Irish culture to the rest of the world. The curiosity built within people as a result is probably what brought you to this video. If you enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe. You know, I'm something of an Irish myself.